So thank you for holding this hearing. Thank you to, to our witnesses all for being here. You know, our, it's pretty clear that our workplace policies have not really kept pace with the changing workforce, and I think we all agree uh, with that. Everyone who's here today testifying and all the members uh, recognize that in different ways. And because we know that paid leave is good for families and businesses, policymakers will continue to address this issue. I thank you, Mr. Reamer, for explaining that uh, from your, your uh, perspective. My state of Oregon has been a national leader in passing legislation to provide workers with paid sick days and predictable schedules. And Oregonians have been able to earn and use job protected sick time to care for themselves or for a family member for nearly two years. Our paid sick day as law allows workers to earn 40 hours of sick time a year that can be used for their own immediate family member or for preventive care. The law also allows paid sick time to be used for domestic violence survivors to obtain services, a really important uh, aspect there. And almost half a million workers benefit from this law, and that makes Oregon a, a better place for families to live and work. And importantly, these um, policies, as, as Mr. Reamer explained, help businesses recruit and retain good, loyal employees. And that decreases turnover and costs associated with hiring and retraining. Simply put, a healthy, happy workforce is good for business. And uh, Susan is a woman in Portland who experienced great hardship before the law passed, taking care of herself and an illness. Uh, she had worked in a grocery store for 15 years, and she uh, could, did not have sick time until the third day of an illness, and only then with a note from her doctor. She explained that she had to go to work sick all the time because she couldn't afford to take unpaid days even to go to the doctor. When she absolutely had to stay home, she had to decide which bill she could pay. She's a mother who also needed sick time to be home with her kids when they were sick. In fact, her employer of 15 years wrote her up for taking too many unpaid sick days and she was terrified about losing her job. So these are the harsh realities of a life without um, paid or protected sick time for low wage workers, especially around the country. So we've heard from members on the other side of the aisle about HR 4219, which does not solve the problem because we know, because that, that, that's voluntary, we know that states and local jurisdictions will continue to address their needs of their constituents like Susan, and that's what Oregon did. Uh, unfortunately, this um, 4219 will eliminate and undermine sick leave policies for workers in Oregon and around the country who are lucky enough to live in a state or a jurisdiction that has implemented paid sick time and it will stifle innovation in state legislatures and local governments until, and the reason states and local governments are acting is because the federal government has not. So if we really want to help workers and families, we should be talking about the Healthy Families Act, uh, which I know our, our colleague, um, Congresswoman DeLauro, uh, will, will talk about, and also the Family Act for paid family leave. That's what we should be discussing today, and until we set that federal standard, state and local governments need to be able to act. So I know, President Reamer, you talked about your law being in place since um, October of uh, 2016, and, you, and can you talk a little bit about how um, your, your um, businesses have responded, how has the community uh, affected, uh, how is the community affected, and what are some of the, um, have you seen negative effects, and what are some of the positive effects? Thank you, Congressman, really enjoyed your comment there. Uh, we think our law has been a big success. We are not hearing from employers that it has been an undue burden for them to make uh, the minor adjustments in their payroll systems that it takes to track. Uh, and we certainly are hearing from employees that they appreciate the rights that have been granted to them by our local government's law. Um, and we know that we had to work closely with uh, our major employers to help establish that nothing that we did in our law uh, would you know, require them to change their policy. And that was important to us because we really appreciate our large employers and we want them to thrive and prosper in our community. And if they're offering better than the requirement, we don't want to disrupt that. So Thank you. And, and, I, and when I'm in Oregon, I participated several years in a, a wonderful event called When Work Works. And we have many small businesses come forward because oftentimes small, you hear that these uh, policies are a burden on small businesses and they talk about how it actually helps them. 
uh, with uh, recruitment, with, with, with retention. Um, and, and Mr. Chairman, um, before I close, I want to ask unanimous consent to enter into the record a letter from Patagonia's Vice President of Human Resources and Shared Services. The letter explains the outdoor, re outdoor retailers' investments in their employees and how they have seen it help both their employees and their bottom line. Hearing no objection, uh, it'll be entered. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back.